Hello everyone, my name is L, and today I will tell you about Somali and the Forest Spirit. The story starts in a forest where the Forest Protector introduces himself. The Forest Protector is called a Golem, and their fate is to secure the forest and ensure all the animals are well protected. Golem doesn't interfere in the feeding of animals, and he doesn't leave the forest. This is, in fact, the life he thinks he is called to live until he meets a little girl. On that fateful day, he sees a little human girl, Somali, who calls him dad. He looks at her in awe and decides to take her as a daughter. To find out the root of humans, he decides to travel around the world with Somali. As they proceed on their journey, Somali gets distracted at any given opportunity. And she also gets lost, but he always finds her and warns her. Eventually, they reach a huge city of monsters. As they arrive in the town, Somali insists she is hungry so they stop by a restaurant to eat. Conversation starts at the restaurant, and he informs the monsters that he is looking for humans. They tell him the weird history of humans and how humans and monsters engage in a huge war. In ancient times, humans and monsters lived separately, and both weren't aware of the existence of each other until a human visited the city of monsters. Gradually, humans and monsters mix, but humans are degrading. Despite their weakness, humans do not lose any opportunity to insult the monsters, and a fight occurs between them. Monsters defeat humans, and the surviving humans flee to find a safer home. Golem knows of the hatred between humans and monsters, so he puts a horn on Somali's head. As they attempt to leave, the monsters advise them to spend the night in an inn, and they succumb. The next day, Golem goes to a gold store to negotiate the sale of some of his stones. As he negotiates, Somali leaves his back when she sees a cat. Somali follows the cat until she gets lost. She catches up with the cat and realizes it is a monster. Regardless, she attempts to pet the cat. In the process, the monster smells that she has a delicious scent and is about to figure out that she is human. Fortunately, Golem finds her and chases the monster away. They proceed on their journey and Golem figures Somali acts based on curiosity. He informs her that he doesn't feel emotions, but he can deduce her steps by analysis. However, she is the first human around him, so she should stop wandering away. He asks her to hold his hand so she will stop getting misplaced. As they continue their journey, they stop by a forest to prepare food. However, as they eat, some bunnies join their meal. Somali welcomes them and pets them, but one of the bunnies goes to eat her food. She chases the bunny and falls. Golem doesn't understand the human body, and he doesn't know how to treat her wound. Luckily for him, a dwarf oni named Shizuno joins them. She introduces herself as a healer and administers first aid to Somali. However, she says Somali will need further treatment, so she invites them to her house. At home, she introduces them to Yabashira, her assistant, who helps Somali treat her wound. As she finishes, they sit and eat, and Golem asks if Shizuno can train him how to make medicine. He says it will be helpful throughout his journey with Somali. Jokingly, Shizuno asks for a piece of Golem's body as a price for the training, and he gives it to her. The training starts. During the training, Somali helps Yabashira with the house chores. As the training proceeds, Shizuno feels terrible for asking for a piece of his body. She asks him why he wants to train, and he says he doesn't want Somali to feel any pain. That night as Somali sleeps, the adults talk, and they wonder why Golem is traveling. He informs them he is traveling to find Somali's parents. He removes his clothes and shows them his cracking body. He tells them his lifespan remains a year, and he will shut down after a year, so she wants to find Somali's parents before then. The following day, Golem and Somali continue their journey while Shizuno and Yabashira bid them goodbye. They continue their journey toward the desert. They are financially stranded, so they can't take a ride. They walk to a neighboring city called Ant Hole City. Somali wonders why it is called Ant Hole City, and the golem tells her it's because the city looks like an ant hole, and if anyone loses their way in that city, they can never be found. Golem attempts to sell some of his stones, but his stones are not very valuable. Somali is hungry, so he takes her to a restaurant. Upon entering, they find a box moving and trust the inquisitive Somali to open it. She finds a young deer boy named Kikila. Kikila's father arrives and tells them his wife is ill and he hasn't found new help. So Golem offers to work there till he gathers enough money to continue his journey. While he works, Somali spends time with Kikila. One night, Golem tells some guests he is looking for humans, and they tell him he may find humans in a desert around the west. He goes to price the requirement he needs to visit the desert and decides to work more and earn more. 
Meanwhile, he refuses to let Somali out of his sight. However, Kakila begs Golem to let Somali follow him on an errand, and Golem reluctantly accepts. On their way back, the kids stop by on the road. Somali starts crying, and she tells Kikila that Golem is thinking of leaving her. To make her feel better, Kikila offers to take her to a forbidden underground cave where people's wishes come true. As they get there, they find the flower that makes wishes come true. Somali uproots it and wakes up a mushroom. The mushroom attempts to attack her, but a wolfman saves her. The wolfman walks toward her and she calls out for her dad. Kikila tells Somali the wolfman is Muthrika, and he is the protector of the underground chamber. The kids notice the flower is withering, and they wonder why. Muthrika tells them that flowers plucked from that side of the room wither fast. The kids are determined to go deep into the chamber to find a better flower, but Muthrika forbids them to go. Since the kids insist, Muthrika offers to take them to the heart of the underground chamber where they find a better flower. Unfortunately, a giant lizard responsible for protecting the flower comes to attack them. Muthrika knows that if he shoots at the lizard, it may provoke it. So he watches as Somali begs the lizard to leave them alone. Somali returns home with the flower happily, but Golem gets angry at her for returning late. He tells her he will stop their journey if she disobeys him again. Somali angrily drops the flower and runs into the room. As she leaves, Murthrika comes by and gives the flower to Golem. He tells Golem the stress the girl went through to get the flower because she wants her wishes to come true. Before leaving, Murthrika tells Golem that a father shouldn't instill fear in his daughter. So Golem goes to meet Somali. However, he meets her ill and drops all his earnings to get her drugs. As she recovers, Kikila's father advises Golem that parenting isn't easy and requires patience and the ability to apologize. The following day, Golem tells Somali about their next trip but says he hasn't gathered enough money. He says he doesn't regret spending money to get her medicine and he can always work for money. She hugs him passionately and begs him not to leave her alone. Later that day, Murthrika meets with Golem again. He tells him he knows his lifespan is ending and begs him to fulfill Somali's wish by staying with her forever, although he knows that wish can't be fulfilled. After gathering some money, the family continues their journey. They take the wheel to another village named Winecup Village, a village Golem explains to be a home for travelers. They stop by a restaurant where Somali requests ice cream. However, as the attendant is about to give her, another lady, a harpy, requests an ice cream too. The ice cream left is just one, and the duo fights each other for it. The harpy, Uzoi, goes nearer to Somali and drags her cheek before her companion. A falco hall named Hayatora stops her. They sit together and share their journey. Uzoi offers Golem to follow them on their wheel. They accept this offer, but in private. Hayatora wonders why Uzoi will make such an offer. Uzoi explains that Somali is human, just like Hayatora. They confess that they are traveling to find a cure for Hayatora and Uzoi whispers to Hayatora's ears that Somali may be a cure. They continue their journey and at night they attempt to pitch a sleeping tent. After pitching the tent, Uzoi asks Somali to follow her to get some water. As they leave, Hayatoro confesses to Golem that he is a human and he thinks Uzoi wants to hurt Somali. At about the same time, Uzoi pins Somali down and brings out her wings. She tells Somali that her blood will most likely heal Hayatora. Golem and Hayatora try to find the girls. On their way, Hayatora explains to Golem that while they were searching for a solution to his sickness, they met a fortune teller who told them his blood was corrupted and he would need new blood to redeem his corrupted blood. So Uzoe thinks Somali's blood will cure him. With the girls, Somali finds a way to survive. She runs away from Uzoe, but Uzoe eventually catches up with her. She falls into a pool and Uzoe saves her. Uzoi realizes she cannot do what she intends to and confesses to Somali the reason behind her action. The men catch up with the girls and they all apologize. That night, Uzoi apologizes to Somali. At the same time, the guys remain outside to talk. Hayatora asks if Golem sees what's coming out of his body and says it is because he was the one that ate Uzoi's mother. He narrates that he once lived in a city with his family before the monsters attacked their city. He went into hiding for days with his family but they eventually became hungry. 
As he came out of the cave, he saw a harpy. He killed it and took it to his family. He told them they also had to become monsters to survive, so he asked them to eat Uazoe's mum. As they did, his wife and child grew feathers and died while he was only injured. Sometime later, he met Uazoe and they became family. Little did Hayatora know that Uazoe is listening to that conversation. She feels betrayed and gets angry. The next day, they continue their journey, but Uazoe is moody. She tries to talk to Somali about being lied to. As they talk, a huge wind carries them out of the wheel. They fall into a part of the desert, and the boys plan how to rescue them. Unfortunately, a bird comes nearer to the girls to attack them. Golem plans to act as a decoy and distract the bird, but Hayatoro runs towards the bird. As the bird chases him, the others deduce that Hayatoro wants to end his life. They follow the bird and Uazoe kills it. She hugs Hayatora and tells him that if he wants a punishment, his sentence will be to stay with her forever. They proceed on their journey, but Golem's years on Earth reduce daily. One night, while he is bothered by his skin's cracks, Hayatora comes to him to talk about how lucky Somali is. Golem tells him Somali isn't fortunate as he has just a few days on Earth, and he needs to get her to other humans before he leaves the world. Hayatoro tells him about a city called the City of Witches, where information about everything on Earth can be found. The following day, Golem and Somali bid Uzoe and Hayatoro goodbye as they proceed to the City of Witches. In the City of Witches, they meet friendly witches that offer Somali food. She drinks and eats to her satisfaction before Golem reminds her of their mission. They visit the library where Hazel helps them find a book on humans. While searching, they meet Hazel's sister, Praline who tells them there is a book on humans titled The Chronicles of Hereso. Following Praline's description, Somali finds the book, but as she removes it from the shelf, she is attacked by some book-eating fishes called pescafish. While Hazel destroys most of the tiny fish, a big one goes for all the books in the room. Somali seeks to protect the Chronicles. As she runs away with it, the fish catches up with her, destroys the book, and attempts to attack her, but Golem saves her. (laughs) Somali tearfully apologizes for getting Golem injured and for not keeping the book safe. Since the book is destroyed, the witches check if there is a previous reader who can tell them the story and figure out the only reader is Isolde Nebsolv, a former librarian who read it about 300 years ago. Unfortunately for them, Hazel tells them Isolde is ill and they won't be able to meet her. Somali cries to Praline, who reluctantly gives them a map to the library and tells them where to find the senior librarian. They continue their journey to the inner part of the library where they meet some security. They escape from the first set and get to the heart of the library. They meet another group of security who attempt to punish them, but Isolde saves them. She calls out for them and they ask her about the chronicles of Hereso. She tells them that she was the one who wrote the book and she narrates one of her ancestors' experiences with humans. A young witch, Fyodora Nebsolv, flies with her magic broom and she falls into a village. As she wakes, she wakes among humans who welcome her peacefully. The head of the humans is a golem named Hereso. While they talk, Fyodora asks humans which species they are of, and humans figure she isn't one of them. Hereso comes to her rescue and tells them she is human. As the villagers leave, Hereso warns her that humans are a very cowardly species, and she needs to hide her identity. She relates with humans and gets closer to a young girl named Mia, who calls her a big sis. One day, she watches as humans attack and kill a harmless monster, and she hides cowardly. That night, the villagers search for her, but Mia finds her first. Unfortunately, the wind blows Mia into a deep part of the forest, and Fyodora shows her which skills by flying to save Mia. However, as she reveals her identity, humans turn against her and send her away. She returns to the witch city where she narrates the story. Several years after the report, Isolde writes it into a book. Isolde tells them Somali is human, and she appreciates Somali loving their world and says that humans and other species on Earth can only live together if they share love. Before she dies, she tells Golem that he can only find humans at the end of the world. Golem and Somali continue their journey. They stop at an abandoned house to take shelter from the rain. Luckily, they find some raw items and Golem makes a meal for Somali for the first time. 
As she eats, they hear a knock and open the door, only for the visitors to be the dwarf Oni and her assistant. They bring them into the house and they all spend their night together. The next day, Shizuno and Yabashira went to visit a neighboring village named Bygone City to see a dentist. Golem and Somali follow them and Somali also has some toothaches. However, as she watches as the dentist describes how to remove a tooth, she gets scared and conceals her illness. Golem notices something is wrong with her and asks to check, but she runs away. She pushes three bandits who attempt to attack the team. Shizuno and Golem beat up the bandits, but Somali gets caught up in the commotion. Her tooth falls out and they take her back to the dentist, who says that it's milk teeth and will grow back. On their way back, they meet an innkeeper who invites them into his inn to repay them for punishing the bandit. After Somali goes to bed at night, Shizuno confesses that she knows Somali is human and asks Golem why he is protecting a human. In response, Golem tells her he feels his duty as the forest protector got extended when he met Somali. He narrates his first experience with Somali to Shizuno. He tells her he found a cart with dead humans during his tour. Then a creature took him to a little child who called him dad. As expected, she sent Somali away, but refused to leave. He got attached to her, then named her after the creature that brought her. He tells Shizuno that if he eventually shuts down, she should please take care of Somali. The following day, the men go for the bodyguard job they took the day before leaving Somali and Shizuno. At home, Somali tells Shizuno she would like to get her father a gift. She thinks of knitting, but she doesn't know how to knit. Luckily for her, Rosa, the innkeeper's wife, visits them and she teaches Somali how to knit. Upon leaving the inn, Rosa sees the three bandits and tells them she feels Somali is human. She sounds sure because she is sure of Somali's scent. After the bodyguard duty ends, Yabashira and Golem return to the inn. On their way, Golem buys Somali a band. Also, Somali is done with the band she is knitting, so they both gift them to each other. That night, they all play around in the snow before they happily return inside. Before sleeping, Golem's extraordinary ability catches conversations between the human hunters coming to find Somali. He calls for Yabashira and confesses to him that Somali is human and human hunters are on their way for her. They plan that Yabashira will act as a decoy while they escape and meet by the end of the tunnel. Yabashira tries to distract some hunters, but another set notices Somali going into the tunnel. Inside the tunnel, the family is attacked by some hunters, but Golem carries them to survive the attack. As they continue their journey, they meet Rosa, and they assume she is their friend, but she arrests them. She tells them she has a hatred for humans and narrates how humans attacked her village when she was a kid. She insists they will take Somali. The hunters arrive to take Somali, but Shizuno steps in for her. They slap Shizuno off and try kidnapping Somali. To protect the young girl, Golem changes into a huge beast that terrifies everyone there. Upon changing into a beast, Golem goes after the hunters, defeats all of them, and it remains Rosa. Yabashira tries to protect Rosa, but Golem throws him away. As Golem is about to kill Rosa, Somali stands in front of him and stops him. Golem shuts down immediately. A few days later, Golem wakes up and apologizes for his last act. He has lost his hands and a large part of his body's functionality, although he doesn't know how long he has left to live. That night, he walks with Shizuno and tells her about his body. She offers to help him find a solution, but he insists there may be no solution. The next day, they continue their journey, and they get to a village. The village has its annual festival on that day. Golem notices Somali is distracted, so he uses the opportunity to run away. As she feels his absence, she runs after him and finds him in the woods. She begs him to come back with her, but he tells her that since his recent raid, she is no longer safe with him. She insists she will always be with him. He hugs her and tells her that is his wish too. They renew their vow to spend all their lives together and Golem comments that even if he becomes a spirit, he will always protect her. That's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.